Hello, this is Professor Wood here at the Center for Energy Education. I'm here to talk to you today about being a little bored. Turn it over. Oh, about renewable energy. What is renewable energy? Okay, I think a few of you have some ideas. Is this an example, this wooden board of renewable energy? Okay, well, let's look at that question. Let's look at that question like you would in one of your classes with a pr process that many of you may have heard of before through your teacher called the KUD process. And that is, what do we already know what do we understand and what can we do with that information? Well, as you probably are aware, we already have some background, some of you do, in energy types. You're familiar with energy being one type being potential energy and another type being kinetic energy. What's the difference? Well, potential energy, you, you look at it this way, potential energy could be energy in storage. It's energy that's not being used but has the capability of working. Kinetic energy is energy being used. It is working. And you may have heard of the, the, also the term energy produces work. Well, we're going to set that concept aside for today's lesson and we're going to go into a lesson that deals with solar energy and how it fits into the alt renewable alternative energy source. So how do we get the renewable heat and light energy out of this wood? So, yes. We burn it, but in burning this wood to get renewable heat and light or renewable energy out of here in the form of heat and light, we unfortunately get carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and other greenhouse gases. Some of these you see as smoke when you see people burning leaves or burning materials. Um, so how do, we get it, how do we get the energy out of here? And how do we get it out of here that is safe? Well, that is a form of renewable energy and we need to figure out our part. Mother Nature's figured out her part in using renewable energy that doesn't hurt humans and planet Earth. Um, so today we're going to do an activity called a solar uh, baking oven and we're going to go through this and end up with the ability to make solar s'mores. And we're going to go through the material you need to do this and some precautions. So first of all, you need a large or medium-sized pizza box. And we'd like to thank Quesamillas for supplying our pizza boxes today. Uh, why do we use a pizza box for this solar oven? Well, think about a pizza box and what it's supposed to do. A pizza box is supposed to be designed to keep the pizza warm. So a pizza box that's made of corrugated cardboard is the best kind of box you can have for this activity. Let me stop and talk about this utility knife. Utility knives can be very dangerous. So this razor blade here is extremely sharp and for all of you, I know some of you may have used one before, but for all of you, you need to check with your parents and have some help from your parents when using this utility or sometimes called a box knife. Once you have all that gathered up, we'll be ready to begin. So, Orient 
the pizza box so that it opens this way and we will cut the flap in the top first. Take your ruler and mark off approximately one and a half inches on your pizza box on three of the sides. Then take your ruler, or I'm going to use a small square, and line up the marks. And let me see if I can hold this up a little bit. Line up the marks, and holding the knife correctly by the handle, you can press through the cardboard and gently pull the knife towards the back of the box towards where the box is hinged. Okay, we did that on one side. I'm going to turn the box around and we're going to do it on the other side. See if I can hold this up a little better for you here. If it's not exactly an inch and a half, that's fine. It can be two inches from the edge, that's also fine if you've got especially a large size box. So we've cut it, we've cut it on two sides. We've cut it on the left side and the right side. The hinge is still connected. We don't want to cut through that hinge. So the next cut then would be to connect the two, the left side and the right side of the box to form the flap and actually I'm making this flap not quite as big as it could be. You can make your flap a little bigger. Okay and that then is basically the end of the need for the knife. So if you have the kind that you can retract the blade, be sure to retract the blade uh, when you put it away so no one gets hurt. Okay, now we can go ahead, well, looks like Professor Wood put the blade away too early. Oh. This is what happens when you get old, you can't see what you're doing. There we go. Okay, so now we have the flap. And like I said, you can cut yours, if you've got a large size box, you can cut yours a little bigger than this, but that'll work for what we're doing today. So, okay. So, let me reposition the box here. So now we need to put the aluminum foil on the reflective surface here. So I'm just gonna bend it back. Again, be sure you haven't cut the hinge on the back. You don't want to cut that off. So I'm going to take the aluminum foil. And as I said earlier, we want to be sure we're working with the shiny side, not the dull side of the aluminum foil. And we're going to take out enough aluminum foil, basically, to cover the flap, plus about an inch on either side of the flap. Um, should be sufficient. And what we're going to do then is place the foil and then bend it around the edge of the flap. Smooth it out, pull all the wrinkles and such out of it. Okay. You, you will probably, again, have a little bigger flap as our demonstration unit does. And you would use a second piece of foil and just continue that on up the flap. Pulling the foil tight and bending it around the flap 
smooth it out as best you can. Wrinkles in the foil here cause the sunlight to go in different directions. So we want to try to get as much of that sunlight to reflect into the box, not in other angles or other directions. Okay, then move to the outside or the back side of the flap. Take some tape and tape the foil in place. So you can see we've taped the foil in place here. Okay, so let me hold this up so you can see. We have the flap covered with the foil. We have the hole uh, where the flap is. And now we're ready to cover the hole here. The oven door, you might think of it as the oven door. We're ready to cover that with the plastic wrap. So we're going to let that. So. Okay, just like the foil, if you can get the wrinkles out of the plastic wrap, which Professor Wood is not too good at, but if you can get the wrinkles out of the plastic wrap, it'll work a little better. So, um, the way I work it is to try to put it down on one side. I don't know if you can see, I'm holding it with my finger on one side, pulling it tight tight to the other side, and I'm going to tape down the one side before I cut the plastic off on the other side. So, let me pull it tight here. It's no big hurry. You can take your time doing this. Okay, so we have it tight on the one side, and actually I can tape the top. Pull it tight, and I can tape the bottom before I tear off the plastic. Then you can take it, some, a little more tape, pull the wrinkles out of the plastic, and so on. Okay. So if you end up with a space here that the plastic doesn't cover, that's no problem. We just get another piece of plastic and do the same thing again, overlapping the hole. Okay, that gives us then a window in the top of, or the door of, you might say, the oven. We're going to open that up and do the same thing on the inside because we want to keep the heat in the box. As I said earlier, the corrugated cardboard will help hold the heat in. The heat will escape somewhat through the plastic, and we don't want that just like a window in your house lets the heat get out of the house easier than the walls of the house. Okay. So, we have plastic on the inside, we have plastic on the outside. Let me put one more piece of tape here to hold it in place. Maybe two more pieces of tape. And then we have the reflector. Okay, so the sunlight comes down, hits the reflector as light, goes through the window, into the box as light. How do we turn that light to heat then? What do we need to do to get that light to turn to heat? Well, we use something that absorbs the light. And in this case, we use a black surface. 
It can be just black construction paper, cardboard, uh, any kind of black surface you can find. You don't need anything real fancy, but if you, but you want to cover the inside of the cardboard box where the window is. You don't have to cover it all, but you want to cover the inside of the cardboard box where the window is with black with a black surface. Okay? When the light comes through the window and hits that black surface, that's where the light changes into a heat wave, sometimes called an infrared wave. We go from a visible wave to a heat wave. Okay. So we're just about done. Just about ready to start cooking that solar some more. Depending upon what day of the year and what time of the day, and naturally if there are clouds outside, we will need to adjust this reflector flap. Okay? So that's the job of the paper clip. And I know these are small, you can't see them too well. That's the job of a paper clip or of the pencil with the thumb tack. Uh, if you take the pencil and the thumb tack off of it, you can position, you can position the pencil to be at different angles to support the flap and take the thumb tack to hold the pencil in place. So I don't know how well you can see this, but I've got the thumbtack going through the cardboard into the pencil eraser, and it will hold the pencil in place to keep the reflector from closing, or keep the flap from closing, and the sunlight then will hit and bounce in. So, Naturally, the positioning of this box, whether it's on a flat surface or an angle surface, whether it's in the middle of the day when the sun's right overhead, the, the flap's going to be back farther, and so on. If this is not a good way for you to hold the lid, then this big paper clip, as I was talking about, if you take the paper clip and open it up, which I'm sure all of you have done sometime in your life. But open the paper clip up so it essentially looks like an upside down L. Again, I don't know how well you can see that. But if you do that, you can go along the edge of your flap poke the hole, take the short end of the paper clip, poke a hole in the side of the cardboard where the corrugated cardboard is. And you can use that as a leg to adjust your flap. Okay, that's basically the oven. Where do we put the food to be cooked? Well, we open up like you would at home. We open up the oven door, and we get out the graham cracker and place it on the black material, and again, I know that may not look too, you may not be able to see that too well, but place it on the black absorbing material, what's going to take that sunlight and convert it to heat. You open up the chocolate bar, and you place that on top of the graham cracker. And if grandma would 
had not eaten all the marshmallows, I'd have one of those today. The best size marshmallow to use for this experiment is the little marshmallows. They will melt much quicker and with much less heat than a big marshmallow. Okay, so then we close the box. Take it outside, point it towards the sun, set the arm for the flap to the right angle, and mine came out. Let me put it back in here. There we go. And it will take approximately an hour. You may will see, you will see then during that period of time, the sun will change positions on the flap. So within, say, the first 30 minutes, you may have to readjust the box so it's picking up more sunlight. Uh, one other way of checking to be sure that the flap, the reflector, is at the right angle is if you have a, a keychain with a little laser pointer on it, you can use it to point towards the flap and see where that uh, laser dot is on the black paper and then move your some more or move the flap so they both line up. So, okay, so that's basically it. And like I said, it'll take about an hour on a normal day for it to melt the chocolate and the marshmallow. If you get the little marshmallows, if you get the little marshmallows, it'll work much better or will work faster than it does with the big marshmallows. Thank you.